Good morning. Um, before I start with what I wrote, uh, editing can be a rather insular and uh, even solitary pursuit. So to see the room full, on behalf of all of my brethren locked away today, working with maniacal directors, I thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here today. I'd like to thank Eva Radovojevich, Jack Riley, everyone from Future Media Concepts and the National Association of Broadcasters for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be here to talk about something I dearly love and hate, film editing. I hope my words will inform and perhaps inspire those thinking about a career in editing. 25 years ago, I started as a sound apprentice on such films as Silverado and St. Almost Fire. I was then introduced, it was then I was introduced to the cumbersome world of 35 millimeter sound editing. One's working day was largely spent at a film bench cutting in sections of what we called single stripe, which was a mono track of sound into units on 1,000 foot reels, which were then loaded for sound effects, backgrounds, and foley. I'm sure none of this makes sense to most of you in the room, but I did feel obligated to at least uh, attempt to talk about those pre-digital days. No feature film back then could be mixed without a small army of picture, sound, and music assistants and apprentices. And um, this is kind of boring, but I'll finish it up anyway. I suppose you'd have to look it up on ancient filmmaking to understand what all this is about, but uh, rest assured that what is done today with the stroke of a keyboard like cutting into sound effect, years ago would have involved my getting on my bike, riding across the lot to sound transfer, waiting for the effect to be transferred from tape to film, rushing back to editorial, coding the transfer section, making a trim tab for it, rolling it up, finally giving it to the editor, who usually by that time either forgot about it or didn't need it. Now, I should point out that my beautiful wife, Leslie, is daughter to one of the finest film editors <clears throat> the business has ever known, Richard Marks. His credits includes, yeah, right, Serpico, Godfather II, Apocalypse Now, Broadcast News, As Good As It Gets, Julie and Julia. You get the idea. It can make one, one's own body of work seem rather inconsequential. Um, anyway, when I met Les, I was a singer in a band, and um, we relocated to New York City. We toured the clubs, and it was all fun and dandy, but after a while, it got really old being the proverbial opening act for bands like the Ramones, the Blasters, and Jim Carroll. I mention this because this background in music proved to be a most welcome asset later on when I started editing. Songwriting is about structure, as is filmmaking, and rhythm, of course, is what film editing is all about. Anyway, we returned to Los Angeles in 1982, and it was at that time Richie, against, probably against his better judgment, introduced me to the diverse, strange, and somewhat intimidating world of editing and post-production. I know it sounds hokey, but from the beginning, I did feel right at home in a cutting room, and that first union paycheck of $562 was sweet. After a few years of sound and music apprentice jobs, I finally made it into Richie's cutting room as a picture apprentice. On to second assistant, first assistant, so on, so on, associate editor. From Pretty in Pink to Broadcast News, from Father of the Bride to Dick Tracy, I was able to learn from the very best. But if you think as the proverbial son-in-law, it was easy. I assure you it's not. If anybody of you met Richie, you would know that. Uh, film editing is not a world where one survives without sacrifice, dedication, and perseverance. Anyone who worked for Richie, as I said, or his mentor, the great Dee Dee Allen, will tell you that. I have four headings or facets of film editing I'd like to discuss with you. They are process, intuition, style and timing, especially for comedy, and the ubiquitous montage. For each, I've chosen some clips that I hope will clarify or at the very least entertain you. I'll make it as brisk as I can, is what I'd really enjoy is just walking over there and talking with you all afterwards and getting off this stuff stage. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> anyway, process. Its definition, a series of actions, changes, or functions bringing about a result. In editing, the word changes particularly applies. Process in relation to editing could also be defined as the final rewrite. I would also add to this another key component in the editorial process. My firm belief that it is the editor's main job to aid, abet, and to realize the director's vision of the film. 
This does not mean there cannot be discussions, disagreements, and violent confrontations about it. But in the end, it's best to check one's ego at the door before sitting down at the Avid, Final Cut Pro, etc. Because you're going to hear a hell of a lot more about what's wrong with your cut than what's right with it. And this is as it should be. Failure is an integral part of the process. There are thousands and thousands of editorial choices attempted throughout the post-production period of a film, most of which do not end up on the film. The editor who can maintain a calm, positive demeanor, one whose confidence is not shaken by the ongoing, sometimes endless process of trial and error, is one who will be doing a great service to the director, the film, and themselves. The following clips are examples of scenes that remain fluid throughout the editing process. They underwent constant reassessment as to their function, purpose, and length within the greater body of the film. This could be argued that every scene in a movie is subject to such scrutiny. However, these next two, I remember as great examples of the old adage, artists never finished, only abandoned. Suffice to say, these are scenes that we did over and over and over and over as the director chose to change the length of them. Um, usually you start out with what's scripted, and um, a three-page scene usually ends up somewhere around a page and a half uh, or less. And so trying to keep the body of that scene and uh, the comedy of the scene all the time, um, fitting it and refitting it into the film as it goes. So these first two are from It's Complicated and P.S. I Love You, numbers one and two. <laughs> 